What's up everybody, Brandon Johnson here again. And today I wanted to talk to you a little bit about a very, very important concept when it comes to guitar, and that is tuning. So I'm down in my basement studio today and I brought out all of my acoustic guitars because acoustic guitars are a lot more temperamental when it comes to staying in tune. An electric guitar has a solid wooden body, which is very sturdy and very strong, and it can generally stay in tune better than an acoustic guitar which has very thin tone woods. Now I just pulled all of these guitars out of their cases and I haven't tuned them at all. So I thought I would just go through and talk about some of the challenges that you may run into when trying to tune your acoustic guitar. Now I've often considered tuning by ear to be sort of a lost art. It's something that a lot of players can't even do anymore because of the dependence on electronic tuners. They're basically universal. And specifically the clip-on tuner. So I have a variety of different sort of clip-on tuners here. This is a snark tuner. I have a couple different types of these, and you know these are are basically universal. Every every guitar player has one of these. Uh, the guy that invented them, um, you know, really took the the clip-on tuner concept and ran with it, and really revolutionized the way people tune guitars. And prior to this, you might have used a tuner that looks something like this. This is my old Boss tuner, which I've had for probably 20 years, and this is a this is a line tuner. So you would plug directly into the input here, uh, tune your guitar through that. It works for electric and acoustic guitars as well. And the problem, especially today with tuning, and you know this is something that I run into a lot in, in live music situations with other musicians, is that people don't tune to each other anymore. Generally, people will tune to their own tuner. And the problem with that is that you're really not getting everybody in tune by doing that. And the reason is, is that everyone's tuner is different. It might be a different make and model of tuner, but also the battery in it, everybody's battery is gonna be at varying levels of charge. So you might have a fresh battery in one guy's tuner, and then the other person's tuner might have a half dead battery. And that's even though we're all tuning to 440, you're gonna have varying different levels of, of tune, of being in tune, because the, the tuner will either be more or less sensitive depending on how charged the battery is. So this leads to a problem of really not being able to effectively get into tune with one another. And Tony Rice, in an interview I heard once, talks about this. He talks about what happens and how magical it can be when everyone is really, really in tune with one another and how it not only affects just the, the sonic, you know, the notes that you're all playing being in tune and having the same frequency, but it actually affects the dynamics and the effectiveness of the music you're trying to produce as well. Yeah, well, here's something that is really weird. It has to do with the laws of physics. If the entire ensemble, the band, if everybody is in real good tune, you can play so much softer, but it's perceived that everybody is playing louder than they really are because everybody is so much in tune. They don't have to really dig in there and beat the crap out of it to right. get the desired results. So, of course, if you play live music, you know that it's not always practical to get everyone tuned together, but I think it's, it's very well worth it to at least make an effort to get maybe one person in tune with a tuner and then try to get everybody to tune up to them um, I think you'll find that it goes a long ways towards really improving the sound of your ensemble. So with acoustic guitars specifically, a lot of the challenges with tuning come from environmental factors. So for example, temperature, humidity level, things like that. Because an acoustic guitar is really a living, breathing thing, as I mentioned earlier, as opposed to an electric guitar, which is more sturdy and, and tends to stay in tune a lot better. So let's talk about some tuning tips and tricks now, some, some things that you can do to kind of help you keep your instruments in tune. So as I mentioned, I just pulled these guitars out of the cases about 10 minutes ago. And so they're, they're more than likely completely out of tune. And you can hear that this one is terribly out of tune because it's been sitting in a case for you know about a month. I haven't played it in a while. So let's grab a tuner and work on getting this guitar in tune. Okay, so here I have a kind of standard uh, clip-on tuner. This is a brand new tuner. I just opened this and I just put a fresh battery in this. So we know we're going to get a really nice kind of uh, tuning for this one. Now you can see here this is, a, this is set to 440. And what we're going to do here is we're just going to start tuning this thing up. Now 
One tip that I would give you, um, kind of in a, a general rule of thumb for tuning, is you always want to tune up to a note. So right here, you can see that we are sharp. We're very sharp here. So I need to come down. So we're gonna bring it down until we get to what we think is close to E. There we go. That's cool, it kind of turns green when it's close to E. Now, we're not done yet because we tuned down to that note. So we're gonna give this a little pull. We're gonna tug on the string just a little bit. These are not brand new strings. These have been on here for a while, so they're well set. And when you do that, you don't pull too hard, but you'll notice that it drops down maybe a quarter step. That's still pretty close, but it drops down a little bit. And that's gonna give you the ability to just inch it back up to being right on that E note. Now I'm just plucking this with my thumb here and you can pluck it with your thumb. You wanna give it a nice pluck with your pick as well. And I can see I'm still a little sharp there, so I'm gonna tune down and then pull on it a little more. And when you pull on it, you're really setting that string in place. So it's not, you know, when you, if you think about the physics of, of the string under tension, you know, if you're loosening it, it's sort of, it's getting looser and looser, but then there's gonna be, you know, it's gonna loosen from this peg down here a little bit. So you're gonna to wanna to pull it to get it really seated nicely. So you're always tuning up to a note. Even if you're sharp, you bring it down and then you tune it back up and you kind of tug on it a little bit to make sure that it's set. So that's pretty good. It's not perfect, it's gonna fluctuate. You, know, you don't have to be a perfectionist about it. So that's pretty close there. Another thing you can do is you can hit the harmonic here on the 12th fret where you're just kind of placing your finger there. And that's gonna give you another kind of point of, point of reference for how your string is tuned. You can do one there as well on the fifth fret. So that's pretty close. It's not perfect, but it's close. All right, so let's move to the A string now. You can see it is way sharp as well. So this guitar is very sharp. It's almost a, it's almost a whole step or a half step sharp from just sitting in the case. So we tuned it down, right? And now we're going to pull on the string, try to get it a little bit flat so that we can just inch it back up, keep tugging. And you just inch that thing back up to your A there. Check our 12th fret, play it with your thumb. Check your fifth fret if you want. So that's pretty good. And then as you're tuning, you can kind of check the other strings that you've tuned and make sure that they're staying in tune. All right, let's go to the D string now. So that's about half a step short again as well. And bring it down, bring it down. We bring it down to about right on the D and then we're gonna tug on this just a little bit to get it just slightly flat so that we can tune up to the D. Tugging on it a little more, making sure that it's seated. Uh, went a little bit, it went a little bit flat there, so we're gonna wanna bring that up. Try our 12th fret. So that's pretty good. Our E is still in tune, our A is still good, and our D is good now. And the reason you do that, the reason you check the other strings is because when you change the, the tension of one string, it's gonna change the tension of the other strings as well because they're all connected to the, to the neck and the neck is sort of changing very slightly as you adjust the tension of the strings. So you always wanna kinda of check the other strings while you're tuning. So let's go to the G now. So we have half a step sharp again. We're gonna bring this back down to G. And bring it a little close to being flat and then we're gonna pull on it a little bit. Now we're, now we're flat, so we're gonna tune up to our G note. Okay. Okay, check our 12th. Little, little flat still. Bring it up just a smidge.
good, that's looking good. So let's go to our B. And our B, look at that, our B is almost a complete full step sharp. And I think the reason for that is that it, it was really hot and humid for a little while here. And the weather changed and it got, you know, the dew point dropped for about a week. And so the guitars will, of course, respond to that. And they will, their tuning will change. Sometimes very dramatically. So we've got our B. Still a little bit flat there. We're still inching it up, inching it up. Pulling, inching it up. Now that's pretty good there. See when I play it, it doesn't fluctuate. And when I pull on it, it doesn't go flat. So that's pretty good. Now, check the other ones. G is still good. D is still good. A is still good. A little sharp. I'm gonna tug on it. Sometimes if it's a little sharp like that, all you have to do is just tug on the string and it'll bring it back down to, to tune. Now the E went a little sharp on me, but that's okay. Our B went a little flat. So there's our E. We're almost almost a full step sharp on that E. Bring that back down. Bring it back down. All right. There we are. We're going to get right to E and then tug on it and make it go a little flat. And then we're going to tune up to our E note. Tug on it a little bit. Tune up, tune up, tune up. Still a little bit sharp, maybe. Now, what has happened? I thought we just tuned our guitar. What's going on here? Well, this is very common. You tune your guitar and it's not fully in tune. What's going on here? Well, sometimes you gotta go through and you gotta make more adjustments. This is very, very common with acoustic guitars. Don't just go off of the, the readout. You really have to use your ears and listen and hear, is this thing in tune or not? Now typically, in my experience, the culprit tends to be the B and the G. Those are the ones that sometimes, for some reason, have issues. Um, so you can kind of start there. If you're, if you're playing a G and you think, actually, that sounds pretty close. Another thing you can do is you can play a note, like right there I'm playing 2nd fret G, and I see that I'm a little sharp there. So I'm going to bring that down a little bit. And that's starting to sound pretty good, right? So that's close enough. And what you're going to notice is that in this kind of a situation where I've used my tuner to tune, and you know, in this case, I'm by myself, so I might spend a little bit of extra time really dialing that in. Now, if I was with a, a group of musicians, I would get myself close to tune, right? I would make the guitar in tune, but then I would try to adjust to the other musicians as well, um, namely the banjo player. Uh, typically, the banjo player uh, will cut through, you know, the, the sound of the ensemble really, really effectively. So you want to make sure that the, as the guitar player, you're really well tuned to the banjo player. So oftentimes, I will really try to try to get in tune with him. And another thing that's happening here uh, that can be kind of confusing if you're trying to keep your guitar in tune is, um, I pulled this out of the case and I sat down and I started filming this video. Well, as I've been holding this guitar, it's actually physically been warming up to my body heat. So that will also change the tuning of the guitar. So as I sit here with this guitar, it's going to, the tuning is gonna change. So, that's another thing you gotta keep in mind as well, is that you really have to kind of continuously try to keep this, see, now that A has gone a little sharp, even though we had it, you know, perfectly dialed in there when we went around the first time. So, as I mentioned, that you know, these acoustic guitars, they can be very temperamental, and they can be very difficult to stay in tune. Okay, so, is that... So that's pretty close. I would be happy with that um, if I was playing in a live 
situation, I would make, you know, maybe small adjustments. But overall, I think that guitar is pretty well in tune. And as I mentioned, uh, these strings are not, you know, super worn. They're a little bit worn, but they're fairly fresh. Now the Martin here, let's get the Martin, my favorite guitar. So these strings are extremely worn. Now listen to that. This is, it's almost completely in tune. And there's a couple reasons for that. Number one, I play this thing quite a bit. Number two, these strings are really old. I mean, there, there is some serious wear on these. I mean, you got that really nice kind of old school Martin tone out of these old worn out strings. And so they are very well seated in this, in this guitar. And they are, you know, they, they have grabbed onto these pegs and they aren't letting go for anything. So this thing is pretty much in tune. Um, and that's, that's a testament to its construction as well as environmental conditions, the fact that I don't really bring it out much. So here you can see this thing is right on almost. B's looking good, E. G was a little sharp there. D is good, A is a little flat. We'll bring that up a little bit. E, a little flat there as well. So that's pretty much in tune now. If you look, these strings, you know, I really wrap these a lot. I wrap these around these pegs, basically as many times as I can. Um, and the reason for that is the more times you wrap the string around the peg, uh, the more points of contact it has, the string has on this tuning peg. And so you're going to get, you know, it's like um, if you think about gripping something with your hand, um, if you just grip it with one finger, you know, you're, you're not going to have the same amount of grip strength as if you were gripping it with all four string, uh, fingers. So I like to wrap this around as many times as I can. Um, and in addition to that, not only does it create a really solid connection here, but also this angle, the angle here from the nut to the, to the peg is going to be more, more of an angle. Okay, so you're going to get better contact with the nut as well. You know, if you're too high here, if your string's too high, and this is sort of floating out here, you don't have as, as solid as a contact here with the nut. And so that's going to affect your tuning as well. So the way you kind of string your guitar is important too. So now another important thing here that we should talk about is capos. So uh, basically two kinds of, two main kinds of capos here. You have the the wraparound one and then the, the kind of the clamp style capo like this one. I sort of tend to prefer these. Um, you know, I know a lot of pickers like these wraparound ones and I do use these ones a lot in a live situation, but you know, typically these ones, um, I do prefer them. They're a little bit easier to handle. They're a little a bit more low profile, I guess. Um, but what I like about them is that you set the, the tension level on these. So, you know, this is set to a specific tension level, and once it's clamped on, I can't really adjust this anymore, so. And what you'll notice there is that when I did that, uh, the guitar went a little wonky again. So, you know, when you put on a capo, you have to kind of retune again. So what's nice about that is it's sort of a set tension level, so it's consistent in terms of, you know, when you put this on, you can kind of anticipate how it's going to affect your tuning. Um, the, the downside of these is that you can't adjust them on the fly without actually physically removing them. Now these ones, this is a nice Elliott kind of wraparound style capo, which, you know, Tony Rice kind of liked to use this style of capo. And what's cool about these is you can, you can adjust the tension on the fly. And, and what you're trying to do is you're trying to get it to the, the perfect point where it's giving you enough tension so that it sound, the notes sound clear, but not too much tension to where you're wildly throwing your guitar out of tune or uh, putting un, undue wear and tear on your frets. Um, so from like a tuning perspective, this, this is a superior style of capo because you can really kind of dial it in. So the capo and the tuner, you're kind of using those together to bring your guitar into tune when you use a capo. Um, so I think for making those adjustments on the fly, this wraparound style capo is probably, probably superior to this kind. Um, but 
that's a major aspect of keeping your guitar in tune is the capo. So keep that in mind. Now, what the final important point here that I'd like to make is tuning in a, a noisy environment, right? So you're on stage, um, you're trying to get yourself in tune. One problem that I've run into many, many times is, especially in a noisy bar in a closed space, uh, the clip-on tuners will not work. They will not work. And oftentimes, this doesn't have a pickup on it, but oftentimes the tuner in the pickup on your guitar will not work because it's physically picking up the noise, the surrounding noise, and it's kind of messing it up. So for me, in a live situation, I'm gonna to go to a line tuner. So here is my line tuner. This is where it's at right here, let me tell you. So here we have the line tuner that I use uh, during my live shows. This, is connect this has a Furman power conditioner in it as well, which I plug all of my pedals and my DI into. Um, so I only have one cord going you know, to the house. A lot of times it's hard to find a power supply, as you know. And so this is, this is really the best way to tune in a live situation when you are plugged in through a DI, because this is not going to be affected by any uh, surrounding background noise. This has a lot of power and a lot of sensitivity to it. Um, it's also a big like strobe tuner type setup, which, which I love. It's really easy to see and um, it's great. So this is something that I would suggest that if you're having trouble, if you play live a lot and you're having trouble staying in tune, I would suggest investing in something like this. They're not very expensive, to be honest, these rack mount tuners. I think this one was only 80 bucks. So not too bad when it comes to gear, but it's definitely the most solid and consistent way to keep your guitar in tune. Um, you can also get tuning pedals as well. Uh, the Boss, you know, Boss makes a really nice tuning pedal which a lot of people that I know use, and that's a great option as well. So anyways, I, I hope you guys enjoyed that, uh, sort of an overview of, of tuning. It's a, it's a topic that I haven't really covered in much detail, but uh, I wanted to kind of go over the basics of tuning and, and the things that I've run into. Um, it's, it's very frustrating sometimes keeping your instrument in tune if you're playing outside, um, if, if it's very cold where you live, like it is where I live. Uh, you know, bringing your guitar out into the freezing cold and into a warm place it can really be a nightmare, but if you just hang in there and you keep trying to get it in tune, eventually it'll acclimate to the temperature and the humidity, and it will eventually stay in tune for you. So just keep at it, keep practicing. So I hope you enjoyed this video today, and we'll see you in the next one. Mm -hmm.